It's a moment in a game that kids dream about as they're growing up learning the game of basketball. We're set for game seven, Spanish language version of today's game presented by ESPN Deportes. Use the SAB button on your television. One final game. As you see Rasheed Wallace in the opening tip for Boston. Wallace is the starting center. Kendrick Perkins tearing up his knee in game six and will not play. Bynum gets inside. This is his first. The Sauls tip will go. Battle for the ball. And the Lakers will have it. Our officials for tonight, Joe Crawford, Dan Crawford, and Scott Foster. For Joe Crawford, it's his third game seven of an NBA Finals. Did it 205 and did it 94. Bynum guarded by Wallace. How will Bynum stay hold up? Another key question. Ball poked away, picked up by Pierce. Celtics trying to bounce back from a poor performance. Completely outplayed in game six. Scored just 67 points. Shot just 33% from the field as Fisher deflects it off of Rondo's leg. Good defense from LA. Perkins can only watch, and you have to feel for that young man. So difficult. Come this far, and the game seven, he has to sit it out. Well, it's tough to watch. You appreciate everything that he does on the basketball floor and as a professional. I'm sure the Lakers appreciate it also. Got to give him a lot of credit, and it's certainly sad to see him on the side. Artest, who had a good game in game six, misses that. Gasol already. Another second shot opportunity. Fisher hits the three. Both possessions. LA's got multiple attempts at the basket. The Celtics are going to have to find a way to rebound the ball as Gasol is called for a block. Believe it or not, that Fisher three was his first of the finals. It was 0 for 8 prior to nailing that one. We've certainly seen, seen him make huge threes during the course of his terrific career. But when you're going up against a team that has a length advantage over you, you've got a gang rebound. You've got to have people coming to the ball. And the Celtics in that previous possession didn't have it. Wallace, a very good post-up player. So much of his offense comes from the three-point land now, but he's very adept down low. Paul well, is a guy that was one of the best power forwards in basketball for, for 10 years. He's first. And I like what both teams are doing, trying to get the other guys involved offensively. You know your stars are going to get it going. You want to get a rhythm for the other guys. Wallace has finals experience, certainly. With Detroit in 04 and 05, Gasol off balance, can't get it to go. Ball taken by Bynum, knocked away, Bynum gets it back. They're letting him play early, blocked by Wallace. And Gasol with an excellent second effort. The big guys battling down low to start. If you're the Celtics, you got to understand it's not about Garnett and Wallace. It's about gang rebounding. You need five guys dedicated and determined to get into the paint and come up with the rebound. They were crushed on the boards early in game six. As Wallace banks it in, Wallace started 13 games during the regular season. He's come off the bench in every playoff game. He did not have a good regular season in his first year with Boston, but he's had some excellent moments in the playoffs. Ray Allen on Bryant. Gasol left open. More second chance opportunities. A foul. And Gasol will go to the rebound. Already the Lakers dominant on the glass. A 6-1 inch early. This is Lakers just length and also athleticism, but give them credit. They're quicker to the basketball. If you're dressed in green, you got to find a way to get in there, put a body on somebody, and come up with the rebound. If you saw that last replay, Ray Allen, as the skirmish was happening in the paint, he's hanging out at the top of the key on the free throw line. That's not good enough. Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, and Rondo are going to have to have good rebounding nights because Rasheed Wallace is a better defender than he is a rebounder. Garnett's going up against a guy who's seven foot as well. So the perimeter players are going to have to do their job. Gasol already with five rebounds as he misses the free throw. He had more rebounds in the first quarter than the entire Celtic team in game six. He's off to another strong start. And Kobe Bryant had 11. He knew the importance of the game and of the importance of the rebounding factor as Garnett scores on a good feed. Nice pass from Rondo. Celtics have hit their first three shots from the field after that visible shooting performance in game six. Right down to Bynum. Bynum right now is too tall. And the length of the Lakers was a big point coming into the series. Right now the Lakers by one. 
That's good offense by the Lakers. You can tell that the Celtics' mindset is to try to put one and a half, two guys on Bryant early on, not allowing him to catch five. Wallace will try from outside this time. And Rondo called for a reach in foul. And let's send it over to Doris Burke for the first time tonight. Hey, Doris. Hey, Mike. Phil Jackson was asked about Andrew Bynum's status in the pregame press conference. He said Gary Vitti and the Lakers training staff said no more than 10 minutes per half for Andrew Bynum. The only thing that would change that is if he tweaks his knee and it ends up being less minutes. But obviously, Mike, he looks good to start. Ray Allen all over Bryant. Good defense there. Ball tipped. Rondo able to come away with it, but lost it. Picked up by Brown. Hard drive to the basket. Knocked away. Boy, they're letting him play early. Bryant tripped up on the loose ball. Celtic ball. Not a lot of whistles in the early going. Now you can let him play, but at some point, that's an obvious foul. I mean, the guy loses control, gets into the seams. That's a good no call right there, but coming up with the loose ball. Rasheed Wallace grabs the right arm. Bryant goes down. That's a clear foul. Pierce trying to go against Artest. Pierce didn't have a free throw in game six, so unusual. Rondo inside and gets the banker. Good ball movement from Boston. Putting Rondo on the baseline is that pick and roll action, so he's not having to take jump shots. Garnett on Gasol. Fisher left open. A two-pointer won't go. And Wallace fumbles a bit, but comes up with the board. This transition game so vital. Bill Jackson said that's the number one key for them coming into game seven. And the only way you can do that is to get stops, clean rebounds like they just did. So the rebounding is important to slow down the Laker offense, but also to ignite their fast break off. The other part of that is, is adding the Lakers not being committed to running back, allowing them to dribble down the court. Now and again, good defense on Bryant. Double team by Pierce has to fire away. It's the side of the backboard. Boy, Ray Allen, excellent job there. And Pierce timed the help perfectly. Well, you see the mindset of the Celtics. They're not allowing Bryant to take over this game early on. That's just a reckless one-on-one -on -one play by Bryant. When help comes, you've done your job. Get rid of the basketball. Here, Ron Artest on the perimeter. Give it up and trust him to make a shot. Double said that's pretty the key for their victory. Defensively is Pierce. This is his shot. Had a good look. The Celtics have taken just seven shots compared to 15 already for the Lakers, but they've missed 12 of those 15. And getting a number of offensive rebounds. The saw nice fake. Pretty bold from the seven footer. But you also saw the difference. Bryant took the double team of, of Garnett and Allen, got rid of the basketball, and Gasol made the play. Garnett. Find him off the dribble. Had a better shot when he first caught it. Goes out of bounds off the air ball. Much to the delight of the Laker fans. It's been so much fun in each arena. The Celtic fans hate the Lakers. And the Laker fans hate the Celtics. A good heated rivalry. The best in the game. It's all inside. Aggressive move. Blocked from behind. And a jump ball. Again, the help defense. Garnett got a piece of it. And those two will jump it up. As we're already past the midway point of the first. Talk about being a presence. Garnett, Rasheed Wallace, giving up offensive boards. But here you see the both big guys contest the shot, not allowing Kyle Gasol to get an uncontested lane. This is game seven. It's time to do it or go home. Boston with the early lead. Tommy Heinsohn, 
One time at 37 points and 23 rebounds. That was game seven, 1957. Celtics beat the St. Louis Hawks. Cedric Maxima now doing radio. And that great 24 point game against the Lakers at 84. They shine in game seven. There's Rondo. Gets inside again and finish. Overall, this is the 17th time in NBA history that the finals has gone to a game seven. The home team has won 13 of the first 16. Our test. Another offensive rebound. Bynum had it, lost it. Ryan gets it back. Tough shot. In and out. Already nine offensive rebounds for the Los Angeles Lakers. Incredible. Garnett. And even though Bynum can't move like he used to, well, certainly with the knee injury, just his presence out there, Jeff, makes a huge difference. And we have a foul. Exactly. The link is right now overwhelming the Celtics. This, even though they lead on the scoreboard as Glenn Davis comes to the game, this won't hold up. You continue to get pounded like they're getting pounded on the board, you're not going to have a chance. And now you take Rasheed Wallace out. One foul on Wallace. Glenn Davis, who they list as 6'9". He's not 6'9". Now he has to guard Bynum. Garnett stays on Gasol. Ryan again. Triple T kicks it out. Extra pass to Fisher, the runner. Derek Fisher with a couple of buckets. And the Lakers back up by one. I'm going to tell you what's going to be important for the Lakers offensively. Ron Artest has got to be ready to catch the basketball and be aggressive. Because Paul Pierce is totally ignored. Ray Allen knocks down the three. Allen in game two had that NBA Finals record with eight threes. He regained his stroke after a struggle in games three, four, and five. Shot the ball well in game six. Artest lost it off the dribble. Here's where the Celtics, that's when they're at their best force and turnovers, but they can't hold on. They had possession, so the shot clock was reset. This saw a huge height advantage on Davis. Here's trying to help. Now they isolate. This saw blocked. Oh, they got a piece of it. Beautiful help defense there. The initial defense by the Celtics has been outstanding. I love the help that Pierce has created. Rondo to Garnett. Perfect pass. And Boston up by four. A lot of good things have happened this entire series for the Celtics when they've gone in the pick and roll action. It's all inside to Kobe Bryant. Good pass from the big man. And Bryant with his first field goal. He'd been 0 for 4. That's bad defense by the Celtics also. Recognize the action on the strong side. You've got to be ready to defend. Right. Draft Channing defense. Defense so good the other night. As Davis gets inside. Nice reverse layup. The big man showing his agility. And if he takes that up on the strong side and doesn't use the rim for protection, that's a shot block by Pau Gasol. Great move by Davis. Davis had the 18 points in game four. That's the game that the Boston bench won in the fourth quarter. Bryant draws the foul, and he'll get to the line for the first time tonight. Kevin Garnett off to a good start, as are the Celtics. Well, you're talking about game seven. You're talking about trying to take home the jewelry. Well, guess what? This is the ticket. Kevin Garnett being a force on the defensive end, altering shots and then offensively. Be ready to be aggressive and attack. Kevin Garnett dominating early, and Kendrick Perkins says, that's what I'm talking about. I'm here to chip. ESPN's presentation of the NBA Finals on ABC. Brought to you by Grown Ups. In theaters June 25th, rated PG-13. And the G-Series. Gatorade has evolved. It's a great American Friday on ESPN. First, the United States takes on group leader Slovenia in a crucial match as the FIBA World Cup rolls on. Then golf's toughest test continues. The U.S. Open entering its second round at Pebble Beach all day Friday on ESPN. Here on a Thursday night, Paul Pierce, the Celtic captain, grew up a stone throw away from the old L.A. Forum. And this game and series means so much to him. 
Yeah, it's a dream come true. I mean, I thought it was, uh, you know, a dream to win a championship against the Lakers, but now you're talking about a scenario where I have an opportunity to win a championship against the Lakers, where it all started for me as a kid, Started where I started playing basketball. The <laughs> problem is I dreamt that I was that Laker. <laughs> Hey, but the good thing is I'm going to be on that court and, uh, you know, with an opportunity to, to raise that trophy. Even though I was a, a big Laker fan, that's, that's out the window now. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to beat the Lakers. That Laker fan has wore Celtic green his entire 12-year career. He talks about when he was a kid, he hated Danny Ainge. <laughs> Ainge played for the Celtics. Ainge now the general manager and his boss with the Boston Celtics. Free throw is a problem early for L.A. One of four from the free throw line. There's six for 22 from the field, but they're only down three because the rebounding. Allen won't go. And Lamar Odom, in his first minutes, gets the rebound. Odom played well in game six, his best game of the finals. Well, played very well, was aggressive offensively, rebound the basketball, and made plays. That's when the Lakers are awfully tough. Lamar Odom is facilitating. Gasol drives. Offensive foul. Pierce draws the charge after the release. And Pau Gasol just picked up his second foul. And Pierce is doing a great job throughout the game of helping off our test. This is well timed. Our test is going through. He reads the penetration, steps in. Great play by Pierce. So that's where there should be some dialogue. It's been all quarter long. If you're on our test, you should go up to Kobe Bryant and Gasol and say, he's not playing me. I'm going to be in the corner. Fine. Paul Pierce with his first field goal. And I know I've beaten the drum about this, but put Paul Pierce in pick and roll and you will get something good. Right now, something's on something good up by five. Kobe Bryant off the mark early as Rondo gets the rebound. It's part of that gang rebound and you want to see from him, Jeff. Well, I also think it's the best way for them to get in transition. If Rondo rebounds it, he can push it without the need of an outlet pass. Under two to play here in the first round. A little ball fake inside to Davis. And again, Big Baby able to finish down low. It's a seven-point lead. See the difference. Rondo coming off that pick and roll, not thinking about how he's being played. Exactly what Doc Rivers wants him to do. Make plays. Good recovery. Rondo gets whacked on a screen. Fisher misses. Pierce another rebound. Quick outlet. Three on two for Boston. Rondo looking, gets inside, nope, they wave it off. Garnett called for a moving screen. And for Kevin Garnett, that's his second foul. So two key players with two personals. And instead of being up, I don't think that's a foul on Garnett. I thought he got away with one earlier on a Rondo fast break, but that one there, he's just running the floor. So instead of being up nine, now, with the depleted depth that they have, they have to go right back to Rasheed Wallace. Meanwhile, Nate Robinson comes in very early for him to give Rondo an early rest. Doc Rivers has been concerned about throughout the playoffs with all the responsibilities that Rondo has to give him early breathers, not do it for four quarters, so early minutes for Robinson. And I, I'm surprised that they've switched Pierce on to Kobe Bryant. I thought Pierce was doing a great job disrupting the rhythm of the Lakers by his help. Our test gets him, and Wallace made a nice play to deflect it. Farmer on the drive. Jordan Farmer can't connect. Wallace tips it nicely to Pierce. Gene Wallace has played well in the start. Final minute, first quarter. Robinson not paying attention. Nearly lost it. Test has done an excellent job on Pierce in this series. Pierce continues looking for Davis. Davis up and under. Big Baby got hit. And that was a very smart play by Pierce. Initially, Rasheed Wallace came to set the pick and roll. But that would have brought Lamar Odom with him. He wanted Bynum involved in the pick and roll, so he sent Rasheed Wallace away, put Bynum, who has less lateral quickness into it, he turns the corner, he finds Davis, and Davis works his way to the free throw line. Davis is enjoying every second of this playoff run. He was on the team in 2008 when they won the championship, but was a bit player, and he says himself, he, he didn't play a huge part in winning. He's played a huge part in these playoffs. We mentioned game four. He's also had other big games. He had a 23-point game 
in the opening round against Miami when Garnett set out because of the suspension. Had a very good game in the Orlando series. He's undersized, but nobody plays harder. And the lead is up to him. Now, and I'm also watching the game within the game. Joey Crawford goes over to Doc Rivers and says, tell Kendrick Perkins to calm down. I'm not going to take him jumping up and down and talking to me the entire game. Doc Rivers goes up to Kendrick Perkins. Kendrick then stands up during the foul shot, says to Joey Crawford, I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm not going to cost my team an opportunity to be wearing the juice. But if you've just possibly torn ligaments, you should have free reign. If you can <laughs> jump with ba a bad knee like that, let him jump. But that green shirt's got to go. <laughs> He's a Celtic. Well, I had to wear green. No. Go with the green tie, Kenny. <laughs> the 13th free run now for the Boston Celtics. It's been a 12-point turnaround. Doc Bach down to four. Bryant with two players on him. Buying him right there. Can't get it to go. Tipped away again by Wallace. Davis dives on the floor, trying to get rid of it, and finds Nate Robinson. Final seconds. Ray Allen fakes, fires a three. Rushed it. And that will end the first quarter. An excellent one for the Boston. Well, that's what we're doing. You know, we, we got the guys that hit first and be aggressive. No, not foul, just be aggressive and physical. You know, they're still hurting us on the glass, so they're doing a little bit of that. But other than that, we're getting stops and we got a good pace. When Rajon Rondo plays well, you guys seem to win. Evaluate his start. He's been great. He's been attacking. I thought last game he was more concerned with getting everybody else off, and I think tonight he's attacking the basket. Doc, thanks. Thank you. Mike. All right, Doris, so the Celtics win the first quarter. Whoever's won the first quarter has won all six previous games of these finals. In the 2010 playoffs, the first quarter winner has won 61 and 18. Incredible numbers. We talk so much about crunch time. Nice pass inside to Wallace and Stone. But, Jeff, you've always talked about, even back when you were coaching, the importance of that first quarter setting the tone. Absolutely. It's a first quarter lead as Bryant takes... I think his second of eight good shots. I thought he forced way too many shots in the first quarter, and particularly, Mike, taking too many dribbles to get into those bad shots. I totally agree with you. I don't think I've seen Kobe Bryant play a worse 12 minutes of basketball than he played in that first quarter. Davis misses. Odom the rebound. Then the rebounding edge is what's keeping the game close. Odom blocked by Tony Allen, but a foul. Really the versatility of Odom down one end, being able to take the ball the length of the floor and draw the foul. Well, this is good basketball. He caught the ball, two dribbles, showed the shot on balance, in the paint. Excellent fundamental work by Bryant. And the shots he's been shooting prior to that, those shots are losing shots. You cannot win games shooting those type of shots. It's a good adjustment by him to get a better quality look. Right now, the Lakers, they just can't shoot. As Bryant will sit down. From the field, they're 25%. From the free throw line, they're one of five. Odom, as we said in game six, eight points, ten rebounds. His first double-digit rebound of the finals also had a couple of blocked shots. And I like what Doc Rivers is doing. Giving short rest to Rondo, short rest to Pierce. You cannot win this game, as Vujicic has called for a foul, on the road, giving too much rest to your core four guys. Something to take it out. Reminder on ESPN Wednesday, June 23rd, the NBA Draft Preview Show. And then on Thursday, the 24th, the 2010 NBA Draft at 7 Eastern. Rondo directing the offense well early. Pierce on the pull-up. Rondo, offensive rebound. Here's 
one of the best rebounding point guards in the league. Paul Pierce is, reminds him of Jason Kidd. Rondo's jump shot won't go. Vujicic the rebound. George Palmer goes underneath the screen and roll, allowing Rondo to shoot. He liked the mindset. Came off aggressive, just wasn't able to knock it down. If, that, if you're the Lakers, you continue to play that way. Farmar steps up. Can't hit that. Artest the rebound. Back up and in. Another offensive rebound for the Lakers. But as Artest is pushing him under, a perimeter player has to come in and get that rebound over the top. There's no way Pierce is going to be able to block out and rebound the ball against Artest in that position. Lakers shooting poorly, but they have 11 offensive rebounds. That's why they're only down by four. Back in Hollywood, where they are out in force for game seven of the NBA Finals at the Staples Center. Their Lakers down by four. Some nervous fans. Ryan Seacrest sitting courtside. George Lopez, Ellen Pompeo, Dustin Hoffman, a huge basketball fan, and Coach Nicholson in his usual spot. Kobe Bryant getting the rest. A slow start, to say the least. Two for eight, and give the Celtics credit. When he's facing multiple dribbles, they're coming with the second defender. These are too many dribbles. He's got to get into his attack earlier because the more he pounds, the more they load the defense up to him and force very difficult shots. His last basket before he went to the bench was his best shot all night, catching it tighter to the lane, getting into the paint, and getting off a quality look. And if you realize also, right after that play, Docker has inserted Paul Pierce back into the ball game because he was doing an outstanding job of playing center field and not allowing Bryant to play one on one. He's trying to find Wallace. Wallace for three. Too strong. And our test the rebound. Celtics just one of six. Neither team has shot the three well consistently in these finals. Both under 30% coming into game seven. That's good offense for the Celtics, though. Good offense. Rasheed Wallace and knockdown shooter getting over. Our test. Bynum, another offensive rebound. Farmar kicks it out. Vujicic wide open. Rondo gets a running start. And Farmar smart play to pick up the foul as we listen to the coach's huddle. Well, we took too many hard, tough shots. Out here. You got to get better shots. You do that by making the ball move. The ball's got to move. We're getting good shots. We got to get stops. Every loose ball we got to get and stay solid and keep pushing that rock. Keep pushing that rock. Both Doc Rivers and Phil Jackson, one of the interesting parts of these finals is there's not a guarantee both will be back next year. Both have said there's a chance they won't return. Wallace misses. Jackson, it's more about his health. He says he'll go within a week after the season. Doc Rivers, it's more about spending more time with his kids and his family. And he says he'll make a decision soon after. Doesn't happen very often when the two coaches from the NBA Finals teams might not return. Nice pass, Bryant. But the soul took his time, got it to go. Kobe Bryant can have double figures assist in this ball game if he wants to. Until the Celtics make an adjustment, he's got to make the right plays, and that's finding two. Well, after that. Difficult first quarter. Lakers have outscored the Celtics seven nothing here in the first three and a half. Shot clock down to five. Artest with the steal. Drives down, lays it in. Lakers have come back to tie it up on a 9-0 run. And the Staples Center crowd in an early frenzy. They're as loud as we've ever heard this arena the other night. Garnett trying to save it. Jack Nicholson did not try to pick up the charge, and it's Laker ball. Garnett was in a code red going over there. <laughs> oh, this crowd fired up. Oh, you can't walk away like that. Oh. And then give the fake hustle of helping him up. Very disappointing defense.
Garnett is okay. Celtics still haven't scored yet here in the second quarter. And it's four minutes in. They missed their first set of shots here in the period. Ryan looks up on the shot clock, finds our test. Ball deflected out. And still Laker ball, eight to shoot. Both teams playing what you would expect, tenacious defense. Ryan nearly falls, gets back up, one on the shot clock, puts it up. And he grazes the rim, or tests the rebound. That shot just grazed the rim. And another offensive rebound for the Lakers. They're getting pounded, the Celtics are, on the boards. Another turnover. Farmar. Wallace got a piece of it. And Pierce the rebound. Good transition defense there. Rondo, post to post, and backs it in. That was a great rebound by Pierce in traffic. They need more guys who are going to get traffic rebounds. Well, it took the Celtics nearly five minutes to score their first points of the second. What a strange game to start. Again, down to five. Ryan to Gasol. Back out our chest. That's a three. Three point shooting right now with two teams that combined two for 14. Ray Allen, open three. He's been off. Hit that first one. But now one of five from downtown. But that's the Celtics' best offense. Pushing the basketball. You get a quality look. A knockdown shooter just missing another jump. Gasol misses a jumper. They want to. Allen's doing a great job chasing his playing Kobe Bryant. He is, and he's going to have to do both. He's going to have to make shots and defend. As he approached the midway point of the second, 25-25. Defensive battle early. Rondo left wide open. Garnett. And a loose ball foul called on Farmer. And we'll have a timeout. They need more transition opportunities. You get it by getting a stop and a rebound. Good rebound by Pierce. Great outlet pass by Pierce. And good decision by Rondo to attack the rim and don't stop until the first defender commits. Nice play by Rondo. Thanks for watching ESPN on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. In the movie Grown Ups, we have to play ball against our old rivals. Now, you know the hottest new rivalry. The Cavs are magic. That's yeah. a tough team to stop. Well, Orlando ball. puts it inside. He gives yeah. it to the big man. They're really hard to stop. The Celtics, Lakers, oh, back in a bit. Bigger than ever. Right now, it's one to one. Lakers, Celtics. The, the new Lakers. The Celtics. new Lakers, Celtics. Oh, oh LeBron, Kobe. I think that's a mutual respect club. Those yeah. guys are going to be buddies. And they're going to do a buddy comedy like uh, Rush Hour. <laughs> back of the Staples Center, midway through the second. 25-25, you know, the best rivalry in NBA history. Certainly the two most successful teams. The Lakers so desperate to get that 16th move within one of the Celtics for number one all time. Garnett. Makes his move, gets inside. Nice reverse. And he's been so effective all series long after the first two games of facing Powell Gasol and making quick moves to either his left or his right going to the top. Fisher, stripped. Still Laker ball. If you're Powell Gasol, you got to make an adjustment. Stay close enough where you can contest, but this is bad defense. A direct line drive to the cup. Good offense by KG. Inside Kobe Bryant, can't get it to go. And another offensive rebound. Back to our chest. Holding fakes. And a foul on our chest. Well, one of the main reasons why the Lakers are getting so many offensive rebounds is because they had a lot of opportunities. They have missed 30 shots already. 11 for 41. 
27%. And down two. That's unheard of. Unbelievable. Well, if you're the Celtics and you lose this final game, it will haunt you for a long time, thinking about how many second opportunities you've given up. Allen gets inside the runner for Allen. That won't go. Why have to rebound? Jeff, how much of this is terrific defense, and how much of this is just guys unable to make shots? It's Garnett with a hard foul. That's going to be three on Garnett. How much of guys not making shots, maybe feeling a little finals pressure? Well, I, I think you have to give credit to the great defense. I mean, it's great defense by both teams. But at the same token, they're missing some very makeable shots. What I like is both teams are forcing the lesser offensive players to take the shot. And the Celtics have kept it close where if they can keep it close throughout the game, it's going to be more difficult for the guys like Artest to feel the, the confidence to knock it in. Garnett will sit most likely for the remainder of the second as he picks up his third foul. And anytime Brian gets the opportunity to play one-on-one, -on -one, does a good job here, turning the corner, takes it to the body of Kevin Garnett as opposed to try to out-jump him, get to the foul line, and try to get some sort of rip. Brian missing the first one badly. It's the second. They're three of eight from the line. Meanwhile, the Celtics have only taken two free throws. Thus far, they only took 10 free throws the entire game in game six. Pierce, nice pull up. And in game five, they didn't get the, the line much at all either. 13 times in game five. Three point Celtic lead. Four and a half remaining in the second. Gasol, quick move back out. Our test jump shot. Rondo had it, lost it, gets it back again. It's still scrambled. And Pierce comes away. Well, it has been a scrappy first half. And Allen out of bounds when he caught it. That's seven turnovers for Boston. Amazing is being here. Season tickets for 2010-2011 on sale now. Go to NBA.com backslash tickets to reserve your seats. The NBA where amazing happens. Where defense happens here in game seven of the finals. It has been an offensive struggle. Artest. That's good. A three-pointer for Ron Artest. And I like what he's doing. The bottom line is if you're on the floor and they're going to dare you to shoot the basketball, then shoot the basketball with confidence. Lakers shooting 28% from the field, and the game is tied. Pierce won't go. Artest all nine of his points here in the second period. He finally came out of his shooting slump in game six. Bryant spinning, tough shot, won't go again. The soul keeps it alive. Davis comes away with a rebound. And Allen falls down, tripped up by Fisher. They are fighting tooth and nail out here in the first half. At some point, you have to understand how you're being defended. They're giving you these wide open shots, and you're our test. Be ready to lock and load on the weak side. With confidence, or if you don't shoot it, you're hurting your basketball team. Ray Allen hasn't missed a free throw in these finals. He's 19 for 19 from the line. He's struggling shooting from outside here in game seven. One of six. We talk about this all the time, Mark. As a player struggling shooting the ball, even going to the free throw line and just getting the feel and watching it go in can help your confidence, correct? Well, absolutely. That's the reason why you would see Kobe Bryant take it to the body of Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen getting to the free throw line. Watching it go through the rim allows you to become confident and establish a rhythm. And you see the difference time and time again throughout the course of the season. The saw the drive. I think Wallace got a piece of it. Rasheed Wallace's defense has been excellent. They, after they get that initial stop, just giving up too many offensive rebounds. 
They want to isolate Paul Pierce. They want to get him the basketball and let him play. Fisher, though, knocks it away. Pierce gets it back, and then a foul on Fisher. And Fisher has picked up his second foul. He does not like the call as the Lakers are in the penalty. So Pierce will head to the free throw line. The defensive battle continues. What you would expect. Tough physical play here. Game seven of the NBA Finals. Lakers and Celtics battling. 2.48 remaining here in the first half. Celtics clinging to a two-point lead. ESPN's presentation of the NBA Finals on ABC. Brought to you by GMC. Watch GMC and Dude Perfect engineer shots you've never seen at gmc.com slash pickup games at Nike Basketball. It's a great American Friday on ESPN. First, the United States taking on group leader Slovenia. Yeah. In a crucial match, the FIFA World Cup rolls on. And then, it's golf's toughest test. United States Open enters its second round at Pebble Beach all day Friday on ESPN. Here on ABC, Game 7 of the NBA Finals, round two of our celebrity watch. And we do this because Jeff Van Gundy is a celebrity watcher. Usher sitting courtside. Your man T.O. hanging out once again. And Leonardo DiCaprio. We still have to wonder about your reaction when you saw Jennifer Garner at breakfast earlier this morning. Very scary. You know what? She might have the cutest young kid I've ever seen. <laughs> I would babysit for her tonight after the game. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you embarrassed us with your behavior. You embarrassed us at breakfast. Waving to the little girl through the window. Are you kidding me? <laughs> She's cute. <laughs> you know, I've actually seen her like grow up through Us Magazine and People Magazine. So when I got to see her in real life, it's like, you know. This is very disconcerting. <laughs> and by the way, Leonardo DiCaprio, we should have highlighted his girlfriend instead. Rocking on the drive. Brian pulls up. Rattles that one in. Just two for 11 before hitting that. And the Celtics lead cut to two. And Shane and Brown, who was the first guard in, in game six, gets in after a very good performance, but late. The bench played well in game six for the Lakers. Wallace five on the shot clock. Turns and shoots and banks it in. Well, you see how good he is down low in the post. You wonder why he spends so much time out on the perimeter. Well, that's like your own shot clock and energy saver. If you're the Celtics playing big minutes, he's holding it there for like 15 seconds. Bryant can't connect. Rondo the rebound, helping out on the boards with his fourth. Ray Allen the drive. Pierce for three. What's it in? Paul Pierce from downtown. And the Celtics back up by seven just like that. Good aggressive play by Ray Allen. Making the play for Pierce with his penetration. Credits to go. The NBA championship still very much up for grabs as we check in with Doris Burke. Mike, I caught up with Laker assistant Frank Hamlin. There was real frustration in their inability to swing the basketball offensively. I asked him what Boston was doing differently. Defensively, he said they're trying to keep Kobe on one side of the floor. We have preached as a staff all series to swing the basketball. If we don't do that, we'll be ineffective on the offensive end, guys. All right, Doris. Phil Jackson said about this game, it's a high-tension situation. Nice pass, Rondo to Garnett. Just in that first half again, we'll talk about a little bit. How much of it is some Game 7 nerves? How much is fatigue? These guys are really battling out there. Well, they're competing extremely hard. I thought near the end of the half, the Celtic perimeter players were barely tired as our test went to the rim. And good second effort. Pierce blocked the first shot. And the strength of our test, he's got 14 points to lead all scores. And it's been in the paint where he's done his work. Rondo, you see wearing that band-aid, he got four stitches in game six, and he took a shot from our test on a drive to the basket. And Kobe Bryant counted, and a foul. No, they're going to say before the shot. The foul is on Bryant. Garnett felt the contact and wisely threw it up at the basket, banked it in. But they will not call continuation. I like what Rondo's doing. Calls Kevin Garnett at half court. 
certainly not in the act of shooting. It says, settle down. Don't worry about it. Stay the course. Let's run our sets, and we'll get something good again. It's just the first foul on Bryant. Rondo looking for Ray Allen. Allen turns and shoots. That won't go. Ray Allen just one of seven from the field. Foul on the pass. Rajon Rondo picks up his second. Right now, foul problems is only one player who has three. That's Kevin Garnett. Of course, that means a lot for the Celtics. Without Kendrick Perkins, out with a knee injury, suffered in the first quarter of game six. And Garnett talking a lot emotionally about Kendrick Perkins. Remember, it was Garnett last year who missed the playoffs with that knee injury. He knows what it's like to sit and watch how difficult that is. Perkins, very popular player on the team. A significant loss for the Celtics. Bryant, long three. And Garnett tips it to Pierce. I thought that was a very tentative move by Powell Gasol. Wasn't trying to make a play. Nice pass inside. Garnett gets it to go. And a foul. Lot of pass in, and the Celtics back up by eight. Rondo is playing outstanding basketball tonight. You cannot front if there's no ball pressure. There's no need to front if you're Gasol. Good on point pass by Rondo, but a bad decision by Gasol. Well, Garnett to the free throw line. Bryant, by the way, that's his second foul. After that last miss, he's three for 15 from the field. And this equals the largest lead for the Boston Celtics. You can count on one hand how many good looks he's had all night. Give credit to the Celtic defense and also to Bryant for being impatient. Wallace, good help. Bryant shot short. Another miss. But another offensive rebound. Artest steps back for three. That won't go. Rondo comes up with it. Again, Rashid Wallace giving Doc Rivers some excellent minutes in the place of the injury, Kendrick Perkins. Fisher fights over the screen. Tough shot from Rondo and gets it to go. And the first double-figure lead causes Phil Jackson to call timeout. Rajon Rondo, 8.6 assists, 4 rebounds. And the Celtics with the largest lead of the night. Good job by Rondo, not trying to be a scorer, but being a facilitator. The ultimate maestro. One trip, making plays for others. Another trip, making it for himself. ESPN's presentation of the NBA Finals on ABC. Brought to you by New York Life, the company you keep. Aerial coverage provided by MetLife. See how MetLife can provide the coverage you need. Visit MetLife.com today. Back at Staples Center for Game 7, this has been an unpredictable series. And certainly, who would have predicted Kobe Bryant having these kind of struggles tonight? Well, again, give credit to Ray Allen and the Celtics. Coming with some double teams, contesting shots, forcing him to take multiple dribbles. These are impossible shots right here. Now, this is a little bit better look, but still a three. Ray Allen does a good job contesting, and then a long two, which Ray Allen contested. And he has been so efficient through six games. I'm absolutely shocked he struggled as much as he had. He is rebounding, but he's got to find a way to get better quality shots. When you think about it, 1994 in the finals, John Stocks of the New York Knicks shot two for 18. Tonight, Kobe Bryant, three for 16. I thought Stocks had quality looks. Bryant is forcing, taking bad looks. Got a good look there. Won't go, Rasheed Wallace, another rebound. Six boards for Wallace. Again, had not started at all in the playoffs. Started 13 times during the regular season, coming up big for Doc Rivers in the Celtics. Garnett against Bynum. Garnett takes Bynum out. And I think if you're Bryant, the mentality should be make plays for others or put the ball on the floor and force the issue. Find a way to get to the free throw. Foul. Offensive foul. 
on our test. It appeared Scott Foster was ready to call a block, but Danny Crawford says a charge, and that's two on our test. And it's only the fourth turnover for the Lakers with their poor shooting. That's helping keeping them in the game. I tell you what, former Houston Rocket coach Rudy Tomjanovich said, never underestimate the heart of a champion. Give credit to this Celtic team. Who would have thought that they'd still be hanging around with a chance to win it all, short of a big man, and finding a way to grind it out. This is the way they've won all season, a season that had many doubts coming into the playoffs. But they have been the grittiest team in the NBA, no question about that. Shot clock down to four. Here's tough shot. Rondo, the offensive rebound, goes back up and banks it in. Rajon Rondo, terrific play, and it's a 13-point lead. Anxious crowd now as Bryant draws the foul. Celtics now on a 7-0 run. The offensive rebound by Rondo, wanting it more than anybody else, and then staying aggressive. Gets the land over the contested hand of Fisher. And I like what Brian did on the other end. Put his head down and made a play. Try to get something going offensive. Tony Allen is going to come in. And it's Paul Pierce. And Brian hits the free throw. He's a little shaken up right now. Grabbing his right shoulder. But a good sign is that there's no trainer near him. It's not a good sign for the Celtics if he's on the bench. I don't care if the trainers come or not, because right now... The trainer's coming. <laughs> yeah. Ed Lassert gets there. Rondo, another rebound. He's sixth. <laughs> the Lakers, 7 of 14 from the free throw line. Terrible free throw shooting. They have struggled shooting the basketball in every which way. Bad pass from Allen, stolen by Fisher. Test. He's been aggressive. Back out. Bryant fakes and stripped. Allen and Gasol trying to call time, and he gets it. Now Gasol diving on the floor. Calling the 22nd timeout. Celtics right now up by 12, but Paul Pierce on the bench and grimacing a bit as he grabbed his shoulder after this play. Some discomfort for the Celtic captain. The NBA season ends tonight with Game 7 of the Finals, but a busy offseason. And you can catch it on ESPN, the 2010 NBA Draft Preview Show, Wednesday, June 23rd. At 10 Eastern, and then Thursday, coverage begins at 7 Eastern, the 2010 NBA Draft on ESPN. And my partner, Mark Jackson, will not be at either because of his son, Mark Action Jackson II, graduating from Taft High School. <laughs> well deserved. I'm an extremely proud dad. You should be. Brian nails that one. It's been a real struggle for Brian. A 10 point game, still early here in the third. Pierce is going to come back in. Rondo struggling, gets back in, flips it up, won't go. And takes it away from Bryant, but couldn't hold on. Boy, Rondo just never gives up on the play. And a good sign for the Celtics. Pierce back in, Tony Allen will sit. Rondo, meanwhile, he's played all but 70 seconds. Ray Allen's played most of the way. Kobe Bryant on our test. Same thing for the Lakers. In the final game of the season. Gasol. Nice spin move using the left hand. So impressive. A man that size with such skill with the basketball. Much better offense the last couple of trips for the Lakers. Ball movement and man movement. Fired up again. This Staples Center crowd has been unbelievable during the finals. Cheering against the hated Celtics. Garnett the drive. Flips it up and gets it to go. 13 for Garnett. Well, the last trip after Rondo shot. KG talked. He 
a good shot from Look for me on the offensive end. Understanding how he is capitalizing on the Powell match. Fisher, a two-pointer with soft touch for the veteran. Talk so much about Kobe Bryant trying to win that fifth championship ring. Fisher right there with him. And to co-sign what Mark said, they're moving Fisher off baseline screens now, which makes it a little bit better people movement. And that's how they got the Gasol post up. Fisher on Rondo, Bryant guarding, guarding Ray Allen. Again, clock winding down, Rondo to the basket, too strong. Odom leading the break. Our chest drives inside, Banker, oh, Odom right there for the foul. And the Celtics need a timeout. Yet another offensive rebound for the Lakers. Sometimes you just got to find a way to get back into the ball game. Pushing the ball off of a stop. Lamar Odom, outstanding job following in the contest. How about Derek Fisher coming off the down screen? Lock and load. Knocks down the jump shot. Lakers, 18 offensive rebounds. We have ourselves a game seven. Last year, the NBA and the NCAA formed iHoops, a joint initiative to support the growth and development of youth basketball. This season, plenty of NBA stars, including Kyle Gasol, Derek Fisher, Dwight Howard, all doing their part to encourage and inspire the kids by hosting clinics during which they taught basketball fundamentals and emphasized the importance of teamwork and sportsmanship. Wayne Wade and his friends. To learn more, visit iHoops.com, the NBA, where caring happens. Five and a half remaining here in the third. Round three of our select watch. They are out in force. Jeremy Pivot, Christina Aguilera sang the national anthem, second straight game. Andy Garcia, Greg Kinnear, frequently here. Laura Dern and Courtney Cox Arquette with some good courtside seats. And they are watching a physical, hard fought battle. Not the prettiest of games, but the defense is taking care of that. Any defensive coach should be proud of the effort. Of these two clubs here in the game seven. Ray Allen can't go. Wallace the rebound. Since that game two, Ray Allen has just been a struggle with his shooting. He got a little bit in game six, but it's back to struggles. Artest with the steal. Pierce gets it back. Pierce kicks it out. Wallace for three. Wow, what a off. He thought he got hit. Behind Odin, and there's Rondo. And our test back defensively. Pierce for three. It's good. Paul Pierce from downtown. And the lead back up to nine. But Lamar Odom trotted back. That would have been his play, but he was frustrated by the turnover at one end, which hurt him at the defensive end. The three point shooting has been poor. And Celtics get a big one there with four and a half to play in the third. Ryan on Ray Allen. Shot from Joe Wallace, another rebound, his eighth. Now Wallace grimacing as he comes up the floor. He's been battling a bad back ever since the conference final series against Orlando. This just in, Mike. Now is not the time to grim. Pierce has it up top and can start test. Pierce falling away. Another rebound for Kobe Bryant. That's 10 boards for Bryant. He's just 4 of 19 from the field. 0 for 5 from downtown. His team down 9. Autumn to the basket. Ready move from the lower order. And offensively, I don't think the Celtics should just rely on Pierce isolation. Put him again in the pick and roll. Make him guard more than one option. Single coverage in the post. Wallace. Nice bank shot. He does it again. Wallace has four field goals, all of them good low post shots. And all game long on the block, he's been extremely patient. Odom left open. Garnett daring him to shoot. Bryant drives inside. Bryant tried to draw the charge, and Bryant able to put it in. A good offense by Bryant that time, not settling. But I believe if you're in the ball, Odom, you have to shoot that basketball. A wide open shot. You have to step in with confidence. Barnett, single coverage against the 
Solo just leans out. Run it. Blows pass. Oh, he blocked it. Terrific block from Paul Gasol. Gasol. He's fouled. And they'll say in the act of shooting. Gasol just eight points but ten rebounds and a good defensive play here. Garnett had been hurting him with the face up, had scored on the play before. Gasol hits him on the hand, hand part of the ball. Good block shot by Gasol. And now he's worked his way to the free throw line. Gasol was tremendous in game six. He led the team in rebounding, in assists, in blocks. Kobe Bryant said he was sensational. This series means a lot to Gasol. We talked about it back in 2008 when the Celtics beat the Los Angeles Lakers in six games to win the championship. Garnett dominated his matchup against Gasol. Gasol said physically he knew he wasn't ready for that. He's worked on it. As Fisher's going to go back to the locker room. Gasol got stronger, helped his conditioning, and he's now one of the premier players in the world as he hits the free throw. Let's take a look at this play. This could be where Fisher hurt himself. We'll get word. We'll pass along info as soon as we get word. Oh, we got back-to-back free throws to go. Five-point game with two and a half to play here in the third. Our test. Here's spinning. Wild shot. Way off the mark. Another rebound for Bryant. Bryant to drive. Knocked away by Ray Allen. Here goes Rondo. Brown gets back. Rondo stripped the foul. How about Ray Allen's defense once again on Kobe Bryant leading to that play? As Brown picks up the personal. You know, great defense by Allen, but also health defense. You see Glenn Davis there stopping the penetration in an active hand. And Rondo going coast to coast. Shannon Brown with the foul. Rondo going to the line. You look at the numbers from the free throw line as he puts that one. That was perfect. Four for 17 from the line. He's always struggled, but not to this extent. Crowd reacting to a replay of that Brown foul on the big screen. I think they disagree. Rondo misses. Baby Davis with the offensive board. Taken away. Wrestled right out of his hands from Ron Artest. Two minutes left in the third. Shot clock at seven. Artest looking. And he stepped out of bounds. This is one of the most poorly played games you'll ever see from an offensive standpoint and one of the hardest competing defenses at both ends that you'll ever see. Such physical defense right from the start. But the shooting numbers, 32% for the Lakers, 43% for the Celtics. And whoever wins isn't ever going to worry about how it's judged. It'll just be a championship. But the losing team will have a tough night sleeping realizing the mistakes that they've made. Ray Allen, in and out, halfway down. Allen, one for nine now from the field. And a foul on Glenn Davis. 14th foul against the Celtics. Lakers will take it out. First foul on Davis. Dogrimus calls a set for Ray Allen, a floppy down set where he comes off the screen. This is a Great look offensively. You have a shooter curling, not able to knock down the shot. Then you look Kobe Bryant, 5 for 20. Ray Allen, 1 for 9. Unexpected numbers from great scorers. John Brown gets it in. Won't go. Tip by Olaf. Gets it back and puts it up and in. Lamar Odom. A big bucket for the Lakers. They cut it to 4. Derek Fisher about to come back on the floor. Much ice off here the Celtics. Davis pulls his way inside but couldn't finish. And Pau Gasol with his 12th rebound. Oh, the 
Well, too much dribbling. Davis playing him well. Bryant comes back up top. Our test for three. Garnett taken away by Brown, but it's going to be set to fall with 27.4 remaining in the third. Oh, a good offense by Bryant that time, not trying to do too much. Getting Ron Artest a wide open look. Artest just not able to knock it down. Scalabrini comes in, Kevin Garnett getting a little rest to end the third, then with the break between the quarters, so a little longer time to get himself ready for the fourth. Because they're not going to be able to afford to have him out much in the fourth. Good, good substitution by Doc Rivers. Lakers have a foul to give here. There's about a two and a half second difference between the game clock and shot clock. Your power to solve, you got to realize you're defending a shooting Scalabrini. Rondo looking. Scalabrini's going to have to put it up. Makes the drive. Goes, clips it up. No. 24 second violation. Doc Rivers not happy. And now the Lakers will have 3.4. To get off the shot, plenty of time. Quick substitution, Tony Allen will come in for Ray Allen. Farmar, Brown, Artest, Gasol out on the floor. Odom will inbound. Going oh, Glenn Davis defending Powell Gasol. That should be a direct pass to Powell. Ball deflected and goes out of bounds with 1.2 remaining. Good play from Tony Allen. So now the Celtics get it back with 1.2 left. Ray Allen will come back in. Scalabrini sits. Rondo heaves it up at the end of the quarter. And that will end the third period. Game seven of the NBA Finals. A hard fought physical defensive battles. The two most storied and successful franchises in NBA history. Trying to get another title. This one up for grabs as we head to the fourth. This presentation of the NBA Finals will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to Los Angeles with Phil Jackson. Phil, two hard playing defenses, but why such a struggle offensively? Uh, I just think, you know, I've been talking to Kobe about trying to do too much. Off the dribble, he's got to do more with a live ball, off ball. Thank you, Coach. Mike. All right, Doris, he's 5 of 20 from the field, Mark. And you say, what is he talking about? Well, he's dribbling the basketball. They're able to keep an eye on him. Double team and then active hands, trying to do too much. Here, double team tries to go the other way. Double team, they're forcing other guys to take and make shots and living with the results. That's a quality possession. Ron Artest just missed it. Bryant struggling all game long. 5 for 20. I've played in this league for a long time. I've played with some great players. I'm betting on greatness. Great guys have a way of understanding I'm struggling, but it's just a matter of time. He'll start the fourth quarter on the bench. Fourth quarter, game seven, NBA Finals, a four-point game. Twelve minutes to determine a champion. Unless, of course, we get overtime. Or the commissioner cancels the game. <laughs> Gasol. Count it, and a foul! Big baby hit him. It's a two-point game. I like the substitution by Phil Jackson. Getting Kobe Bryant out of the game and getting other guys involved. So Pau Gasol now gets a catch and he's able to take advantage of his mismatch on the offensive end. If you're Jackson, you're hoping Bryant slows it down and sees how, how he could be effective on the floor. Boy, another missed free throw. Lakers 9 of 17 from the line. Wants it. Our test right up on top of him. Here's the drive. Oh, excellent Laker defense. Ball deflected. Last touch by Wallace. I'm going to tell you what. Ron Artest has been outstanding in game seven on both ends of the floor. Flat out a stud today. tonight. And that's why, to me, you have to put Pierce into more one-on-one, -on -one, I mean, more pick-and-roll situations instead of one-on-one -on -one because he's not getting anything good off his isolation. Test. 
Makes the drive. Davis knocks it away. Vujicic gets it back. Can't get it to go. And a loose ball foul call against the Celtics. The Saul had it in his grasp and got whacked. Big Baby picks up another personal. That's three on in. Yeah, Pierce looked like he was going to get a breather. Artest will come out and get a rest as Kobe Bryant quickly comes back. And Artest actually looked over at Phil Jackson and asked for this blow. Needed a quick breather. And you don't mind as a coach. You're giving me everything you have on both ends of the floor. I'll give you a breather. He's played all but 90 seconds of the game. Bryant on the pull up. In and out. And Davis the rebound. But that was a good shot. That was well-balanced, mid-range jump shot. The shooting struggles continue for Kobe Bryant. You see the number five for 21. He's guarding Ray Allen now. Farmar's on Rondo. And a foul on Vujicic on the entry pass. Team's first, his second. Garnett back in. And our test also returns. Because they didn't want, it looked like Pierce was coming out when Ray Allen checked in. He stayed in, so when Artes came out, they didn't want to have Pierce on the floor without Artes being on the floor. Rasheed Wallace sits. 14 to shoot. Into the hands of Rondo. He's had a solid game. Pierce trying to draw the foul. Won't go. Rondo tips it back. They can go in the backcourt and grab that on the deflection. Something shooting down to 41%. Lakers at 31. Deflected by Farmar. Artest picks it up. Artest to the basket. Knocked out of bounds. Still Laker ball as Garnett goes crashing into the photographers along the baseline. That wasn't a foul. Is that a foul? No, he didn't call it. And our test didn't seem to argue. So the Lakers inbound. That's a foul. I give our test a lot of credit for not arguing. Bryant to Odom. Odom for three. And it's tipped back out. Lost. Allen picks it up. On the drive, blocking foul on Kobe Bryant. And that will be his third. But on the contact, Ray Allen should have got that ball up in the air and shot free throws. Really looked like an offensive foul without looking at the replay. Allen throws his shoulder down. No question about it. That's not a foul to me. That's an offensive foul. Well, it's close. He's moving in a little bit at the end like that. I think that's a block. I think that was a good call. That means I'm right. Anytime you say so. <laughs> That's a good point. Palmer bumping Allen. Rondo kicks it inside to Davis. Lost it. Gets it back. Shot clock winding down. Rondo looking for an opening. Feeds it inside. Garnett. Won't go. Powell to sell with his 14th rebound of the night. And the danger of the other Celtics, you have an opportunity to create some space, create a gap. You're allowing the Lakers to hang around. Farmar. Shot off nicely by Rondo. Try again. Pass inside. Deflected by Davis. Big baby with good hands. Again, over the top to Garnett. Banks it in. But again, if you're going to back off of Rondo, you cannot front the post. It's too easy offense for the Boston Celtics. And Phil Jackson calls timeout. Rondo with his eighth assist. And Garnett, 15 points. Austin's lead back up to four. You're right. Farmar's backed off. Gasol for the second time tonight. Running. Too easy of a pass. Good catch by Garnett. He's one of the few who's shooting well. ESPN's presentation of the NBA Finals on ABC. Brought to you by Budweiser. With full flavor and a crisp, clean finish, it's what we do. It's a great American Friday on ESPN. First, the United States takes on Slovenia in a crucial match as the FIFA World Cup rolls on. 
Then golf's toughest test continues. The U.S. Open entering its second round at Pebble Beach all day Friday on ESPN. The NBA season coming to an end tonight. Game seven of the finals. And with nine minutes to go, Celtics by four. Let's listen to a Doc Rivers huddle. If you want this, go get it, all right? Go get it. Go get it. Keep pushing the ball up the floor. It's a Celtic team that came into the playoffs. There are not many people, except in that Celtic locker room, who thought they'd do damage in the playoffs. But in the second round, they beat Cleveland. Best record. Third round, Orlando. Second best record. And now trying to knock off the L.A. Lakers for another title. Ryan draws the foul, and it should be three free throws as Ray Allen got caught. Let's see what the call is from the two Crawfords. They're going to look at the replay and see if the foot was beyond the line. And clearly a three-point attempt. Well, you can't see it. But he never moved his feet again after he elevated. Yep. So he'll get three free throws with 8.46 remaining. He's even missed a couple of free throws tonight. In what has been a very difficult shooting game for Kobe Bryant. And I think this review actually helps the Boston Celtics. The reason why is because Docker has made a gutsy, gutsy play in taking Rondo out of the ball game. Referees say, yes, Bryant will get three shots. But taking Rondo out of the ball game, putting in Nate Robinson, something that's a tough call as a coach. But what that time did, it allowed Rondo to get extra rest. So you don't have to keep him out as long as you would, would have intended to. Nate Robinson acquired from the Knicks in midseason has helped them win two big playoff games. Game six against Orlando. And that unbelievable bench performance in game four of the finals. And Rondo will get a breather. And remember, Mike, he started game two here in the fourth quarter after sitting the entire first three quarters and scored seven important points. Doc Rivers, I give him credit. He has big guts. He has put some faith into the littlest guy on the floor. His bench has come through for him a number of times. Robinson, case in point. And then Rasheed Wallace tonight moved from the bench to the starting lineup. By the way, Wallace, they were working on his hamstring was tight. It wasn't his back that he was grimacing about before, Lawrence Burke telling us. Hits all three, one point game. You know, now Doc is about to insert Tony Allen into the ball game. Awfully, awfully gut, gutsy calls inserting these guys when it matters most, when it's all on the line. Pierce, Oda picks it up, good help defense. Ray Allen on the drive, the floater. Shot's good. Maybe his toughest attempt of the night, and it goes in. He was one for nine before knocking that down. And again, that's great defense by the Lakers. That's outstanding defense, and Allen hits a tough run. Ryan, double team. Again, to get it out of his hands. Our chest, one dribble. Too strong. Davis rips down the rebound. What he just did was a great defensive play. He doubled Bryant, rotated back, got inside, and then blocked out the longer Oda. He's got nine rebounds in 19 minutes off the bench. Robinson to the basket, high off the glass, won't go. Last touch by Robinson. And it's Laker ball with 7.45 remaining. And last possession, too, for the Lakers offensively. If you'll run our test, forget about taking that dribble. Take the first shot when you're open. And let's not underestimate if Fisher can't get back in this game. His, his value is not being on the court. Gasol inside our chest. Count it, and a foul! Lakers with a chance to tie it at the free throw line. Ron Artest having a terrific game now with 16 points. Moving without the basketball, recognizing that Paul Pierce is a designated center fielder. Artest goes away and then gets into the paint area. Great unselfish play by Gasol. Tie game. This crowd in a frenzy. Many on their feet here at the Staples Center. Defense! 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 Ray Allen the drive. Tough shot. And 
draws the foul. And with that, Rondo and Wallace come in. Big Baby Davis will sit down. Terrific job from Davis as Ray Allen will shoot two. Good misdirection play, giving it to Robinson on a handoff and then good use of the screen by Ray Allen and unquestionably a foul. Fourth foul on Kobe Bryant. That's his first miss of the finals. He was 21 for 21. Still so much time remaining. Crowd trying to rattle one of the great free throw shooters. And he calmly puts that in. I say calmly, who knows how hard his heart is beating right now. Oh, you're a knockdown shooter. Calmly is the correct word. Wallace back in on Gasol. Now Gasol to the basket. Blocked. Fight for it underneath. A scramble. And it's going to be Laker ball with six left to shoot. They have let them play right from the start of this game. There's been a lot of contact down low. And Pierce, a little slow to get up. Uh, yeah, that looks like a good block. That's a good job of blocking the basketball without. Initially, it looked like a lot of contact, but that's a good job by Wallace and KG help. That's not good officiating. That's great officiating. Because if you see his body, most people would have instinctively just called a foul. Lakers have just six to shoot. Good ball denial from Ray Allen. They can't get it to Kobe Bryant. Shot clock at three. Odom. Gasol tried to jam it in on the foul, and they call the foul. Well, C. Wallace has to be careful as he picks up his fifth personal, and that could be used. Again, no Kendrick Perkins with that knee injury. It's the importance of rebounding the basketball. So not only do you commit the foul, but you end the penalty. So Pau Gasol going to the line. What? Is that the penalty? That's the 15th foul on the Celtics. And another missed free throw. They missed nine free throws, 13 for 22. Fisher back in for L.A. And Davis is going to come in for Wallace after his fifth foul. Again, with all these missed free throws, you have to make sure you're disciplined in your free throw rebound. Players on the lane can go in on the release. This is another. The soul has played so well, has missed five of seven from the line. One point, Celtic lead. Here comes Odom on the double. Ray Allen looking, draws the foul. And he'll go back to the free throw line. And Derek Fisher picks up his third personal. But because the way that Kevin Garnett is facing and taking advantage of the Pau Gasol matchup, the Lakers force the double team Garnett. He's a willing passer, puts Ray Allen in position to create that contact and go to the line. That's excellent offense and great patience by Garnett. Allen was one for two. Again, one of the best free throw shooters in the history of the NBA. But he has struggled shooting the basketball tonight. Just two of ten from the field. Oh, the Lakers allowed Garnett to play one-on-one -on -one all series long. But when it matters most, they're getting the ball out of his hands. So Lamar Odom comes on the weak side. Garnett delivers the pass on point to Ray Allen. Derek Fisher running at him, doesn't settle, and gets two free throws. Two pressure shots there from Allen, lead back to three. With just under six and a half remaining in the NBA season. Saw falling for the ball. Back out Fisher. Fisher for three. Bang! Tie game! Derek Fisher does it again in the postseason in a big moment. Rondo flips it up. That won't go. And a loose ball foul ball against the Celtics. They're in the penalty, so Bryant will go to the line. And we'll have a timeout. 
Well, they're posting Pau Gasol, and he's an excellent passer off the dribble. Rondo gives some help. That's an excellent closeout and a big time shot. 5.56 remaining, fourth quarter, game seven of the NBA Finals. The NBA Championship hanging in the balance here at the Staples Center. Thanks for watching ESPN on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. Everybody, I want everybody to stay aggressive. I don't want any hero basketball. Trust each other. Everybody stay aggressive, all right? Movement, 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 movement. Kobe Bryant with a 5 for 21 performance, but he's getting out at the most important time as the Lakers have tied it up. Some nights, Gladys Knight not feeling well, while the Pips got to hold it down. Lamar Odom offensively making a play. Pal Gasol doing what he does best on the block. Ron Artest moving without the basketball. Big time three-point play and also solid deep. And Derek Fisher. Oh, reliable, knocking down another big shot. And Brian says, thank you guys for giving me a chance and keeping me alive in game set. And now Bryant will go to the line to give the Lakers their first lead since midway through the second. They trailed by as many as 13. That was in the third quarter. And slowly chipped away at the lead. Bryant now 7 of 10 from the line. This might go down as one of the lowest scoring finals games in NBA history, but it has been, from a defensive standpoint, just so tough, so physical. And you got to give credit to Bryant. Struggling all game long, this has been a bad game for him offensively, but the guy has 12 big rebounds. He's doing his job defensively and on the boards. Their first lead of the second half, the Lakers by two, just past the midway point, fourth quarter of game seven. Good help from Gasol. Boy, both defenses just playing so hard. Ray Allen way off the mark. Another rebound for Kobe Bryant. And coach, that's great D by the ball. Rotating to the body of Garnett, forcing him to get rid of the basketball. Now, where are the Celtics going to find offense right now? Bryant on the pull up. Puts it in. Four point Laker lead. Their largest of the game. Timeout, Boston. Believe Bryant saying, I'm gonna roll these dice and I better not crap out. Knocks down a big time jumper and the bench enjoy. Lakers Celtics in the finals game seven 1962. Bill Russell 30 points, 40 rebounds. They won an overtime for their fifth title in six years. Then in 66, he had a broken bone in his foot. Russell still had 32 rebounds. Red Auerbach won his eighth straight title, his last game as coach. In 69, Jerry West, 42 points in triple-double. He was the finals MVP, but Don Nelson's late shot, the difference. And the Celtics beat the Lakers again in a game seven. Then in 84, Larry Bird, the finals MVP, but Cornbread Maxwell, at 24 points, eight rebounds, eight assists. Celtics four for four in game sevens against the Los Angeles Lakers. And now the Lakers with a four point lead. It's been a 17 point turnaround here in the second half, but still plenty of time remaining. Garnett, Ray Allen driving. Sue Wallace back in. Pierce. Puts it up, shot won't go. Bryant, yet another rebound. 14 boards for Kobe Bryant. Celtics really struggling to score. With seven points here in this fourth quarter. Shot clock at five. Bryant backs in. Inside to Gasol. Tried to draw the foul, and he got it. 
A late whistle, but Kevin Garnett called for the personal. That's four. And Pau Gasol back to the line. Gasol just two of seven from the free throw line. Free throw so huge right now. See Garnett tried to pull back but couldn't. That's a foul. A poor offensive sequence by the Lakers as Gasol knocks it in. As Bryant was into multiple dribbles, and Garnett made a mistake. Jeff, what do the Celtics need to do here offensively? They need Larry Bird right now because they need some offense. And I, I don't know where they're going to create it. The Lakers are playing great defense. Rasheed Wallace is open. He's going to have to be ready. He made a good play on an extra pass to Pierce, but they made something. A 9 0 run for the Lakers. Ray Allen. Up and somebody needing to step up offensively. On the drive, gets inside. Pretty won't move, but he can't finish. And look who comes down with another rebound. It's 15th in the game. Coming up on four minutes remaining. Allen all over Brian. Brian pulls up. Won't go. Garnett the rebound. This is what they need to push in transition. But you see all five Lakers back. Pierce, jump shot, knocks it down. Big bucket for the Celtics. And that cuts it to four. But a good play by Rondo. Getting floppy action, so he has options with Allen coming off one side and Pierce the other. Make the right decision. Here's his first points here in the fourth quarter. Bryant back in his hands again. Bryant gets to the rim. Blocked for the foul. And Kobe Bryant will shoot free throws as Paul Pierce picks up his third. And you can tell Bryant is sensing the finish line. Mine made up. Pierce, good job coming from the weak side. Certainly some contact, not allowing Bryant to get all the way to the cup. And a mistake by Ray Allen. All his help was to his left. That's the way they've tried to influence him all series. And he was, he allowed Bryant to rip it through and get to his right hand. What a roller coaster ride these finals have been. Lakers taking game one. Celtics coming back and winning a game two here at the Staples Center. And then going and winning game three. And going up two to one. And then the Boston bench tied it in game four. Celtics winning back-to-back -to, -back to take a 3-2 lead as they head back to Los Angeles. And the Lakers with that terrific performance in Game 6. And what a turnaround here in Game 7. Bryant, one for two, five-point game. And I'll tell you what, this is the best I've ever seen the Lakers defend. I mean, on point, switching, rotating, pitch a perfect game. Both defenses have been amazing here tonight. Pass inside to Garnett. Garnett throws it down. Three-point game with three to play. Celtics and the Lakers for the NBA championship. Rondo goes for the steal. Pass inside to Saul. And Gasol, nice head fake, draws the contact. That's five on Garnett. Coach, this is exactly what you talked about. Trusting each other and making the right play. Rasheed Wallace, high hands by Garnett. Doesn't try to make the home run play, but an on-point pass, and Garnett finishing at the rim. And offensively for the Lakers, I like what Brian did. Take the double team and make the right play. Lakers with their 14th and 15th free throw attempts of the period. And again, when they double Bryant, they've got to jam the lane and make the ball go to Odom or Artest and make him make a range shot. You can't just give up free throws. Kyle Gasol, 16 points, 15 rebounds, four assists, and a block shot. Lakers by five. Trying to find some room. Again, terrific Laker defense. Allen the drive inside to Wallace. 
Wallace won't go. The sole rebound knocked away, but picked up by our chest. With under two and a half to play. And a blocking foul call. More free throws for the Lakers. Lakers have outscored the Celtics 20 to 11 here in the fourth. Four fouls on Pierce. It's a poor foul. And again, the Celtics are going to look back and say, we didn't even make them make shots. We just put them at the line the whole fourth quarter. Half their points coming from the line here in the period. The Celtics misses again. 20 remaining. And if I'm Doc Rivers, I'm thinking about putting going small to create some mismatch or more quickness where we can drive the ball because right now we have no chance of getting off quality shots. Both teams have multiple timeouts remaining. He does the right thing. Puts the ball in the hands of Paul Pierce. You expect to see a pick and roll where he's going to make a play. And there's a foul. That's exactly what the Lakers do not want. Send Paul Pierce to the free throw line. And not a smart play by Ron Artest, especially because you're switching pick and roll. So your job is to just keep a body on him and then hand him off to the guy defending the screener. This is a bad foul by Ron Artest. Once again, coach, what you talked about, giving up three points. Pierce is perfect from the line. Just two points here in the fourth quarter. He's an excellent free throw shooter. That makes it a five point game. Again, both teams multiple timeouts left. That one rolls around and drops in. And it's a four point game. to the cross, Rondo on him. Ray Allen's on Kobe Bryant. Bryant the drive, our chest. Odom, in and out. And Pierce the rebound, under two minutes remaining. Great double team and rotation by the Celtics. Pierce the drive, gets to the rim, blocked from behind. Wallace tries to save it, but he's out of bounds. Laker ball with 146 remaining. number of players crashing into the stands. Wallace, a good effort, but he couldn't control it. And it's Laker ball. Exactly what you want, though. We talked about P.S. getting into the scenes, but great help defense by Powell and great hustle by Wallace, trying to save the basketball inbounds, sacrificing his body. But clearly out of bounds. Lakers get possession. Gasol's second block of the game. Assad Gasol. Backs in, spins, fake, shot. It's good! Gasol got it to go! Time out, Celtics. Lakers by six with a minute and a half to play. How about the Lakers going away from Bryant and going to Powell Gasol? Isolation one on one with Rasheed Wallace. The pump fake. Fundamentally sound. Lays it in. Big time move at a big time moment. Celtics down by six with a minute and a half left to go in game seven. It's a great American Friday on ESPN. First United States and Slovenia. And the FIFA World Cup as it rolls on. And then golf's Toughest test, the U.S. Open, second round at Pebble Beach, all day Friday on ESPN. As we welcome you back, Game 7 of the NBA Finals from the Staples Center in Los Angeles. Tonight's aerial footage provided by MetLife. MetLife can help you tackle the ifs in life. Visit MetLife.com to learn more. 90 seconds remain in the NBA season. Pau Gasol and the Celtics up by six after Gasol with a difficult, tough shot. That was very close to traveling on this play as you see the timeouts remaining. You can't come back down and land before you shoot. There Gasol has landed, the ball's still in his hands. That's a much tougher call when it's going full speed than on slow-mo. 
Rondo will inbound. Still plenty of time remaining. Pierce looking for an opening. Wallace puts up the three. It's good! Wallace from downtown! And it's a three-point game! Doctor is so good at designing plays out of timeout. Great patience by Pierce allowing the play to develop. Rasheed Wallace has made some huge plays tonight. Coming up on a minute remaining. Brian looking. Our chest. That's a three. Bang! Lakers by six with a minute to play. 20 points for Ron Artest. Under a minute remaining. Wallace back out to Rondo. Another three. Ray Allen from deep in the corner. Holden drives. Rondo trying to knock it away. Three consecutive three-pointers here on the final 90 seconds. And why aren't they matched up? Why is Rondo on Lamar Odom and Pal Gasol? Bryant for three. Won't go. Gasol the rebound. Picks it back out to Bryant. Drives to the basket. And he's fouled. A blocking foul on Wallace. And Bryant will shoot two. The coach, exactly what you talked about because of the not matching up. Rondo's forced to defend Pau Gasol, and he gets the offensive ball. And he has no chance to rebound with the length of Gasol. And they had plenty of opportunity. That's just... Uh, that foul on Rasheed Wallace, his sixth, so he is out. And now Kobe Bryant will shoot two with the Lakers holding on to this three-point lead, 25.7 remaining. Well, Rasheed Wallace fouling out the game. He has a guy all game long, all season long, telling his coach and the Celtics organization, I'm going to be ready when it matters most. He certainly responded. Give him credit. Outstanding postseason for Wallace. Kobe Bryant, six of seven from the free throw line here in this fourth quarter. Lakers with 23 offensive rebounds. Celtics still with two timeouts remaining. Either team with a foul to give. Some big shots down the stretch. How about Ron Artest with his second three-pointer? And how about the trust? Bryant makes the play. Instead of trying to go for the home run, takes the double team and gets the ball to Artest, and he does the rest. And you got to be happy for Ron Artest. It down. Our test had his highs and lows during the course of the regular season and even in the playoffs. But he's come up with some huge performances. First, remember in the conference finals against Phoenix, he had that tip in the follow to win game five. Then had 25 points in game six. His terrific defense on Paul Pierce has been a big part of these NBA finals. All right, now 81 76 still. 25.7 remaining. It's certainly not over for the Boston Celtics, but they're going to need some very quick buckets, Jeff, correct? Well, exactly. And again, you've got to give a, a very good look to a quick two, or if the three opens up, you got to knock it in. But you've got, you can't waste a lot of time getting into what you're doing. They want for the Lakers again. They were down 13 in the third quarter, struggling offensively all game long. Kobe Bryant struggling to shooting the basketball, but all of a sudden, other different guys stepping up and making huge plays. Well, they found a way to get it done on the defensive end until their offense came alive. Give them credit. When they needed stops most, they got it done. And to me, it was all about getting into the penalty early. They lived in the penalty. They lived on the line. And that's how they were able to overcome the deficit. Allen, Garnett, Rondo, Nate Robinson. Robinson, a very good three-point shooter. Watch frequently on these plays. The guy who inbounds the pass gets it back. Robinson, though, is cold, hasn't played in a while. Allen fires a three. Short. Rebound lost. Picked up by Rondo. Rondo puts up a three. Puts it in. Rondo from downtown. A two-point game with 16.2 remaining. They have to foul. Rondo reaching in. And there's the foul. 
Well, do they say it's just Laker ball? They're saying Lakers ball out of bounds off of Rondo. Yep. So now the Lakers will call timeout. 81-79, an unlikely three-pointer for Rajon Rondo. His first attempt from downtown in the game. And it keeps the Celtics hopes alive. And the effort of Rondo to come up with the ball. Give credit to the Celtics. This team has no quit in them. Finding a way to still grind it out and give themselves a chance. Rondo chasing down the loose ball. Knocks down the three. It's been like that all season for the Celtics and then here in the playoffs. But they're still down two. All right, Jeff, you, obviously you try and steal the inbounds. How long do you wait? You try a couple of passes before you foul or do you foul right away? I'm going to foul right away. Uh, what you really need is time on the clock. And the officials right now are reviewing who the ball went out off of. And clearly to me, that's Rondo. But you don't have time to wait right here. Yep, Joe Crawford had a perfect look at it as Rondo deflected it. Rondo, the NBA steals leader, trying to come up with the biggest steal of his life. So it knocked it out of bounds. And now, of course, getting the ball inbounds is huge. Off the timeout, they advance the ball to the front court, and they can throw it in the backcourt. And if you're the Celtics, dictate who catches the basketball by overplaying Bryant Fisher. Make a bad free throw shooter. Go to the line or increase your percentages by foul. And I'm surprised Boston didn't put a bigger man on the ball. They have Nate Robinson playing in a center field position right here. Odom looking. Finds Vujicic. And Vujicic is fouled. Vujicic has only played five minutes. Hasn't been to the free throw line. He's an excellent free throw shooter for his career at 88%. But here in these finals, he's only been to the line four total times. And it shows you the confidence that Phil Jackson has in him. Has him in the ball game, understanding the ball will find him. And he believes that he's an outstanding free throw shooter and the time won't change. Huge free throws here. To step up, not playing much in a pressure situation. NBA Finals Game 7. Vujicic, the 25-year-old from Slovenia, with a chance to make it a four-point game. Oh, clutch free throws from Sasha Vujicic. And Doc Rivers calls his final timeout. Lakers by four with 11.7. Again, I don't know if he was calm, but he looked it at the free throw line. Two perfect free throws. And Kobe Bryant, never so closer to a fifth championship. All right, key here now, Boston, out of timeouts. They obviously have to score as soon as they can, whether it's a three or a two, right, Mark? It's got to be quick. And you can't fall in love with the three-point line. It'd be ideal if you get a three-point shot, but you have to score quick. And then you can't... You got to foul whoever catches the basketball. The time, the clock is not your friend, so it's important to score quick and then foul immediately. Looking to steal also. Well, because you have no more timeouts left, so you really have to make sure you get the ball in right here. Robinson, Allen, Pierce, Garnett, and Rondo. Rondo will inbound. 11.7 seconds remaining in a four-point game. NBA championship coming down to the final seconds. Gil the ball to play an inbounds pass, and you should recognize where the shooters are coming off. Rondo looking, gets it to Pierce. Pierce turns back out. Rondo thinks, dribbles, puts up the three, won't go. Rebound to Saul, picks it out to Odom. 